Good afternoon. It is November 29th, 2017, and this is the monthly Relo Andes webinar series coming to you from the uh, United States Embassy in Lima, Peru. And uh, I am Rob O'Leary. I am one of the English language fellows working here through the embassy. Uh, I did the presentation last month and this month we are very lucky to have to my left, to my left, Lisa Wakefield, who is uh, my colleague and also an English language fellow. And she has some very interesting tips for you this month. So please listen in and be ready to answer questions and our poll questions. Lisa, you are live. Thank you, Rob, and thank you, teachers, for joining us for this month's webinar. I would like to start off by asking you to take a couple of poll questions. So if you would take a minute and do that, that would be awesome. Just want to know who our audience is today and who I'm talking to. And then I'm also curious to see if you're in Lima or outside of Lima. It's 6% who are kindergarten, 17% uh, are primary school teachers, 33% are secondary school teachers, and 44% are post-secondary school teachers. Wow, we have a huge post-secondary group. That's awesome. And how many of them are in Lima? Please go ahead and vote. We'll give you to the count of eight. About, yep, let's make this quick. We're not giving quick. you ten. We're giving you eight. So six, getting wiggy with that. It's 62% uh, are teachers from Lima and 38% are outside of Lima. Okay. Well, today I'm going to be talking to you about interactive vocabulary strategies that you can use in your classroom. So again, interactive vocabulary strategies. And the thing I want to point out today is that these are really going to help foster your students' communication skills. All the activities I am presenting today will increase your students' communicative skills. They will create interaction between students and facilitate cooperation, listening, and speaking, which we know is so important. And they will help the visual, kinesthetic, and tactile learners. And they will address various multiple intelligences to meet the needs of different learners. So with that, let's get going. The first activity I want to talk about is called Roll the Die. And this is done in partners. So person A chooses a vocabulary word from their list of vocabulary terms you have, and they roll the die. Person B then answers the question, and then they will switch roles. Now I know you may not all have dice in your classroom, and that's okay. This would be a very fun activity to have your students make. They could make the die and draw the circles on them, and you don't actually have to go out and have real ones, and kids love doing that kind of stuff. So this is how it works. If the partner rolls a let, or rolls a number one, they have to pronounce the term that you've given them or that their partner's chosen correctly five times. And we all know students need help with pronunciation, so this gives them that practice. If they roll a two, they have to give an example of the term. If they roll a three, they have to act it out. If they roll a four, they have to give the definition of the word. If they roll a five, they have to draw a picture, and stick figures are okay because that's all I can draw. And if they roll a six, they have to give a non-example. So Rob and I are going to model this for you, and I have my handy die here. So the word we're going to use is energetic because it's always a, a good word to know. So I'm going to roll first. The die has been cast. All right. So I rolled a four. So I have to give the definition of energetic. So I might say the definition of energetic is to have a lot of energy or an abundance of energy and to do many actions. So Rob's going to roll now. Rolling. I have rolled a six. So that I would have to do what, Lisa? You have to give a non-example of the word energetic, Rob. Non-example. So maybe the opposite, maybe an antonym or something like that. So that we could word. say that uh, my, uh, my brother is very lazy. He just sits around all day on the couch and does not exercise. That's great. So I'm going to roll one more time, and I've rolled a one. So now I'm going to pronounce the word five times to my partner. Energetic. 
no, that would be uh, very good. Uh, but try energetic. Okay, energetic. Yes. Energetic, 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 energetic. So now students have had a chance to play with the vocabulary words in your class and do some different things with them. So can I ask a question? Are we encouraging our students to gamble? Gambling is not permitted. Okay. But so vocabulary this is practice is. Very good. I just want to clarify that point. So some other strategies you could throw in the comprehension one is to give a synonym or give an antonym, which is almost like a non-example. You could add in say it and spell it, especially with a word like energetic um, that's a little harder to spell, or use in a sentence. So you can swap out any of those that you maybe don't like or don't think would work for your classroom and insert some different ideas of things you want students to do for comprehension skills of your vocabulary terms. All right, after that, once they've practiced comprehension skills with vocabulary, we can take it to the next level, which is application strategies. This will help increase your students' depth of knowledge and increase the rigor of the vocabulary activity. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. It's a roll the die activity. Person A chooses the vocabulary word from the list and they roll the die. Person B answers the question and then they switch roles or jobs. So here are your options if you want to go to the higher level with application. If they roll a one, they're going to paraphrase the definition. So this time we want them to say what the word means using their own words, which we all know is a higher level thinking skill. If they roll a two, they use the term in a sentence. So they're actually doing the application. If they roll a three, they need to tell a story or a joke using the term. If they roll a four, we want them to ask a non-definition question using the term. If they roll a five, they need to say when and how they could use this term. And if they roll a six, we want them to explain how to implement this term in your classroom. So Rob and I are gonna go ahead and practice that and we're going to keep our same word just for sample purposes. Which of is? Energetic. So, Rob, why don't you roll first this time? Oh, I got a one. All right. So, can you paraphrase the word energetic and please use your own words? Mm. Uh, energetic. It's when a person has lots of, I guess, energy and they want to do a lot of things and they can't slow down. Okay, so I'm going to roll the die now, and I have just rolled a six, so I have to say how I'm going to implement the term in the classroom. So as a student, I might say, I can implement this term in my writing class because it's a good English word to know. Rob, how about you try it one more time? What if I roll a six, too? I'm... But you can say how you would use it. Ah. I rolled a three. Oh, you're good at joke telling. So, Rob, tell us a story. I'm over not sure a if joke. I can tell you use a, 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 a joke with energetic. I uh, don't have that much uh, energy at the moment to tell a joke. <laughs> but um, I can tell you that I ran a 10-kilometer race on Sunday, and I needed a lot of energy to run the race without stopping from the beginning to the end. Without that energy, I would have had to stop and sit down and rest. So you were very energetic Sunday by running a 10K. Yes, at, at 9 o'clock in the morning. You have to be energetic to be uh, up and moving at that time on a Sunday. Oh, that's a great story, Rob. Oh, it was a joke. No. <laughs> All right. So the first strategy was roll the die. And I would like you to take a minute and think about where do you see the comprehension and or application strategies fitting into your classroom? Go ahead and think and type in some responses to that. And then tell me what are some effective vocabulary strategies you're currently using in your class today? Do you want to sing a song or play some music while they're... You know, I'm afraid that if I started singing, everyone would exit the webinar because... That's... I don't have a lovely voice. Oh boy. People needing people. Maybe yeah. you shouldn't sing either. People are going to leave I, us. Yeah, I think they might even leave faster if I uh, sing as well. So, so Christmas carols while we wait. Would you want to 
Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yes. As someone, uh, we have Elizabeth says, uh, I see it as a great fluency building activity. Very good. Uh, we also have Luz Miranda Valencia for warming ups or for wrap up. So warming and wrapping. Sounds like making like a meal or something like that. Very good. Warming and wrapping. And I. I I think I would probably use it in that way as well. It'd be good to get students started. It would be good for reluctant speakers. Ah, so we have a question. Uh, uh, Aras, Aras, Arasyak, what about making word combinations? You can. I'm not sure if that's a question, but I guess you could use word have word combinations with that. Well, I like the idea of using it for a warm-up or a wrap-up activity. You know, if you have five minutes at the beginning of class and you just want to get students engaged in the lesson and review the previous day's activity, this would be a great warm-up activity. Or same thing as a wrap-up. You've taught the vocabulary and you just want them to practice with it for the last five minutes of class. Mm -hmm. Those are some great ideas. Thanks for sharing those. Okay, we're going to move on to our next strategy, and this one is also good for reviewing. And I don't know how many of you know Quiz Quiz Trade or have used Quiz Quiz Trade. Is that like Duck Duck Goose? A little bit. So the Quiz Quiz Trade is an activity that can be done quickly, like a warm up or wrap up too. You could do it the first 10 minutes of class, or you could end it your class the last 10 minutes with this. So this strategy is great for practice and review of your unit vocabulary, and it works for any subject. You can use it in math, science, English. This one is also done in partners, and then partners switch roles and trade cards. So I'm going to go through how this works. The teacher prepares a set of question cards for the class, or better yet, you could have your students create the question cards. You already know this material, so if you have your students create the cards, then they're having more opportunities to practice with the material and learn it. The first thing the teacher does is they give everyone a card, and the teacher tells students, stand up, put a hand up, and then pair up. So basically, students lift their hands up, find someone, give a light high five, and now you've got partner A and B. So partner A quizzes partner B. Partner B answers the question that Partner A asks, and Partner A praises or coaches. So for example, if Rob and I are partners and I ask him a vocabulary question and he gets it right, I'm going to say, great job, Rob. If he didn't quite get it right or didn't quite understand it, then I'm going to prompt him and coach him a little bit to help him figure out the answer. Then they switch roles. And at the end, the partners trade cards and thank each other. Now, it's really important to remember to have students trade cards because this is now they get a new vocabulary word, and this helps them continue to review and learn all the vocabulary words you have for your unit. Then you repeat these steps, but with a new partner and new cards, and you can do this any number of times you want. So let's look at this a little bit more in detail. So here's an example of a quiz quiz trade. You can use um, photos or words or both. Be sure the answer is on the back in case the partner does not know the word. This way they are learning too. So for this one, I would show my partner the question. I am, I'm on a low land between hills or mountains. They would respond with, I am a valley. Then I would show them to picture, the picture to say, you are correct, great job, so that I've praised them. If they did not know the answer, they didn't know the word valley, I would cover the word valley with my finger and just show them the picture. And then maybe that would give them enough coaching for them to go, oh, that's a valley. And then I could say, yes, great job. So remember, students are allowed to coach if it's necessary. Remember, each student needs a card with a word and the answer on the back. Each person, each person quizzes the partner, and then they trade cards. Next, they move to a new partner and repeat the process. So here's some sample cards for various subjects, just so you see different ways to apply this. If you want to do some math, 
you can give them the math problem and a picture on there. If you want to do some grammar, the second set is a grammar quiz, quiz, quiz trade. So they might see the question, the cupboard was full of tens, and then you're asking students to identify the parts of speech. So the nouns in the sentence are cupboard and tens. The verb in the sentence is full. The auxiliary verb is was. Adjective is full, and the article is the. So there's lots of ways to do this activity. Be creative and use what works for you or your students. Now let's talk, let's reflect a little bit and think about this one. How can you use Quiz Quiz Trade in your classroom? What units would it work well with? So were they answering this? Will they? Oops. Yes, go ahead and type in your responses, please, so I can see what your thoughts are. Yeah, really think through what what are some units you teach in your classroom that you think this would go well with? And maybe you teach English and science. Maybe it fits well in some of your science units. Or you teach English and math. How could you use it in your English or math classes? All right, are we getting any responses, uh, yes. Rob? Uh, we're getting from Maria Quintana. Uh, any unit that includes any vocabulary. Oh, so uh, true. Heidi Salas uh, said to practice verb tenses. I like ah. that one. And then we also have Juan Andres uh, Quintana. I can use it for the vocabulary part. I guess any vocabulary part in your uh, in your lesson. Um, and we'll do one more. Uh, Romina Vela says in grammar, for example, to make sentences or yes/no questions. All right, so I'm going to have you answer the second question now on that. Why would this be a good activity for students? What are your thoughts there? Take about 10 seconds and tell me why this would be good for students. I'm excited to see what you think. By the way, someone also said uh, to Marco Antonio, I can't see the rest of his name, said to practice telling time, like numbers. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be great. You could give them pictures of clocks on a card with the arrows pointing to different times and they would have to walk around and say what time the clock says in English. I like that idea. And you teachers are so creative, I'm sure you can find some amazing ways to implement this. Yeah. So um, Fanny is saying that uh, Calderon, Calderon says they can, students can interact. Uh, uh, let's see, Alejandra Bernalis Valencia says because they can practice in a fun way. Um, so we're getting various answers about why it'd be a good activity. Uh, Luis Alberto Goeba says because students can have a different way to practice English and have fun. Yeah, you know, I don't know about you, but my students in the United States got tired of sitting and they like to get up and move around. So I think just the chance to get up, walk around, interact with their peers, the more we can do that, the more, the more students respond. Yeah, and uh, by the way, we have one more. Elizabeth uh, Palacios says it can help students' retention of a new word, again, in a fun way. Yeah, and we talked about those kin kinesthetic learners at the beginning of class, those students that need to be up and moving around. So this really um, helps those kinesthetic learners to get up and do something. All right, the next activity isn't so much a review activity, although you can make it one after you initially do it. Um, it's more of a way to introduce new vocabulary to students, and it's called a tap and talk activity. Rob is over here tapping, trying to oh. be annoying. Prior to teaching new vocabulary, do a tap and talk activity. This will create thinking and speaking in your classroom, as well as a student-centered learning environment. And then, if you have time or want to, you can follow up with a writing piece to this activity. So this is one I created last year for my students, and we were doing a unit on the civil rights in America, so I went through the story we were going to read, and I picked out some vocabulary words that I thought would be new to them or words they wouldn't know. And then what I did is I pulled out pictures that corresponded with those vocabulary words and put them on a sheet of paper. I then gave my students this sheet of paper and they were in partners and they have to tap and talk. So the way this works is partner A taps or touches a picture and they talk about what they see in the picture. And then it goes on to partner B. 
they tap a picture and talk about what they see. This continues until all partners have talked about all the pictures. And I think it's important to understand or to know that there's really no wrong answer. It's really just activating their prior knowledge, getting them engaged and prepared for the lesson, and getting them to communicate. When I used this last year, I just stood back in my class and it was so awesome to see all the students interacting and talking. And I wasn't in charge. They were in charge of their own learning. So it's a pretty fun activity to try. So again, Rob and I are going to model this. So I'm tapping on the first picture right now. And it's a big white building, if you're following along. And so what I might say to Rob is, I think this is like a government or federal building, maybe in Washington, D.C. or in Lima, Peru. And then now Rob's going to tap and talk on a picture. Oh, I'm tapping one with uh, the big crowd. And I'm thinking this might be a group of people who uh, just finished a marathon because someone is holding a sign that says, I ran. <laughs> uh, yes, is that correct? Well, there's no wrong answer, okay. Rob, but if I were to tap and talk on that one, I might say, this looks like a group of people who are protesting or not really happy with something, and they're marching. Oh, But there's okay. no wrong answer. Maybe they did just run a marathon, because it is a crowd of people. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap on the one in the middle between the white building and the group of people, and I might say something like, this looks like something I've seen in a church before. Um, I think it might be an angel or something like that. And so your students would just continue with their partners to tap and say what they see in the pictures. When they're done with that, you would go ahead and actually give them the words that go with each picture from the story they're about to read. So the list of words that go with these photos are bricks, abdicate, church, federal, massive, and demonstration. And now you would tell students to match the picture with the words. There's several ways you can do this. They can just write the word next to the picture, or you can have these cut out or have them cut them out and place them next to the picture. Now when I did this in my class, it was always interesting because they would get some correct and they would get some wrong. So when they're all done, you would then go over what the correct answers are. And again, I always tell my students, you know, it's okay if you're wrong, take a risk and guess which words go with the pictures. And then I would tell them to explain to each other why they did that. So if I took the word bricks and put it next to the picture of the bricks, I would say, I think these are bricks because I see them around my city and they're building houses with them and I know that word. So the explanation of why, again, gets them talking and interacting with each other. And then once you've done that, you can use this as review over the next week or so if you want to. So usually the next day students would come in and on their desk I would have the words and the pictures and just say, go ahead and put the, the words on the pictures again today. Let's review. And we would just take five or six minutes and review. Or again, you could do it at the end of the class. Now, if you want to, you can take this and extend it into a little more of a formal writing activity. So once you've gone over the tap and talk, you've given them time to put the words with the pictures, and you've gone over the correct answers, you can create um, a spreadsheet. And I, don't, I think these might be in the handouts. I'm not sure. If not, you can create one. But basically, you would list the vocabulary word. So for example, the first one is federal. And then you could have them write the definition in their own words. Now, I'll be honest, my students really struggled with that since it was new vocabulary. So most of the time, we did this as a whole class. And I would ask, does anyone know what the word federal means? And if someone knew, they would say. If not, I would go ahead and coach them through the definition and tell them federal means part of the government. Go ahead and write that down on your spreadsheet. And then I would ask the students, is there any more information? What else do you know about federal? And they might say, well, in Peru, we have beautiful federal buildings. Or they might say, we have a lot of federal buildings. Again, the more information is just to get them thinking and speaking and expanding their knowledge. And it doesn't have to be anything specific. 
I will tell you as the teacher this one takes a little more work because you need to take the time to look at the story you're going to read, pull out some words, create the pictures, and then if you're going to do the extended writing activity, I would say you need to already have thought through the definitions and some more information in case your students struggle with that. This is a little bit higher level thinking. But it's, I'll tell you, it's also super fun. It's really cool to watch students doing all the interaction and speaking. And then they have this as a study guide or a review guide for the vocabulary if you're going to test on it. Well, maybe I can jump in and I can say maybe uh, at the you could use this at the end after you finish the unit, and they can go back and they can prove how much they learned by doing the activity again, trying to remember the words, and then making the sentence since they already they they now know the definition. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, it's going to depend on your objective, and do you really need them to know the definition? For an assessment, you might want to give it up front. If it's not as important, then you could do like Rob said and have them do it at the very end. All right, we have our final poll. So we're going to get that up for you. And I would like to know which activity would you like to try in your classroom? So let's see, which if you could try one of these three activities and implement one in your classroom for vocabulary, either instruction or practice, which would you like to try? Should I go for the 98% on one of these again? Maybe no, 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 Rob. Mm, the numbers are constantly changing, but it looks like it's like a, it's a, a horse race here between tap and talk and roll the dice. For some reason, quiz, quiz, trade is lagging. It is not trending, as the kids would say now. Well, that's okay. This is meant to be honest and reflect on which one would fit for your own personal classroom and teaching style. It's actually rolling the dice and tap, tap, talk are neck and neck. What do you think they are? What, do you, what number? What percent do you think? 50-50. If 50-50 was 39-39, you'd be right. All right. So it looks like most of you are very interested in the tap and talk or the roll yep. the die. So that's 40-40 so is the new 50-50. Ah, 40-40. So again, uh, with the roll the die, if you don't have dice available, and I know some of your class sizes are very large, you're more than welcome just to have your students create their own cubes and draw the dots on there for the die. So, um, and then you don't have to go out and try and find them or spend the money on them, and it's an activity students would love. Actually, last minute result, roll the die, just peaked ahead at 42%. Oh, yay, I'm so excited. It is really a fun activity. And then, as I said earlier in the presentation, if there's um, pieces up there you don't like, like acting out the term or giving a non-example, swap those out with something that works better, like spelling or using it in a sentence. You're not limited to the ones I put in the slides. You're more than welcome to change those out with something that fits your students or your classroom better. And then the tap and talk, again, that one takes a little more work on the teacher's part, so you'll have to spend some additional time going through and picking out the words you want to use and then finding photos to match those. But I will say it's well worth the prep time because the results of the students interacting and talking through the vocabulary are pretty amazing. Instead of, by the way, instead of quiz, quiz, trade, can you do trade, trade, quiz, or does it have to be quiz, quiz, trade? I think you have to do quiz, quiz, trade. Trade, okay. trade, quiz, I don't know what you're trading. Just want to make sure, I just, you know, it's kind of like a think, pair, and share. Sometimes I want to share, think, and pair. You can't really move that around too much. You have to keep it as is, I'm supposing. Well, we have some time left, so if you have questions you want to post, I would be thrilled to field some questions now the last few minutes. So what can we ask? What kind of questions? Like, well, uh, questions. how can I use this in my classroom? Yeah. Uh, so why doesn't everyone take uh, 20 seconds and uh, send us a question or a comment based on what you've learned today and maybe explain how you might use this in your own class? Yeah, I would love to take some questions you might have or um, if you have comments about the strategies and what you think of them or how you benefited from today's webinar, any of that stuff would be great. And I also wanted to tell you, um, we've created a fellows Facebook page for Peru 
where we post um, different things from time to time. So please like our Facebook page. The link is on the last slide that's up there now. And it's English Language Fellow Peru. Rob and I try and get around the country and do some different presentations and we post photos up there. If you want to ask us questions on that Facebook page or want more information, you can go ahead and just post stuff right there to us and we check it and we'll respond. All right, it looks like we have some questions coming in, so let's see what they are. All right, so uh, Luis Alberto Gueba said, I found the tap and talk activity very interesting. Thank you for this webinar. Oh, you are so welcome, and thank you for joining in, and I hope that works for you. If you try it, post to the Facebook page and let us know how it worked or what you thought, and we'd love to hear back from you. Very good, and we have one from Ulyssa Marlelli uh, Vasquez uh, Albino. Uh, sorry if I get the names wrong. She says, uh, could you give a tip on how to apply tap and talk to first grade students? Oh, wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think, think about what vocabulary you're going to teach um, that they would be able to speak about. You'll have to choose your question, you'll have to choose your words very carefully, and then same thing with your pictures. So, let's say you're going to be teaching a unit on maybe animals, then you could put some pictures of different animals and they could say, that's a zebra, um, or that's an elephant, and you can see what they already know about those pictures, and just see if you can elicit as much conversation from them as possible. And then I don't know that I would do the writing piece with first grade, I would just do the speaking piece where they have a picture and, and talk about what they see in there. First graders like to talk, and you know, maybe they say it um, in Spanish and English you determine what's best for your group of students at that age. Do we have, uh, how would, you, this is from Marco Antonio Gonzalez Serrano, how would you have beginners work with, uh, this is kind of similar, work with the tap and talk? Yeah, it's a little bit harder for beginners if they don't have any language. Um, this works a little better with your intermediate students, but I would definitely try it with your beginners, especially this time of year. Um, you've had them almost an entire school year, so give them a few photos of vocabulary that you're going to be teaching in the next couple of weeks and see what they can do with them. Remember, there's no wrong answer. The idea is to get them thinking and talking, and then when you give them the actual vocabulary words, they can attach them to the picture and they might go, oh, that makes sense now. I was totally on another idea. But again, they're thinking and communicating, which is what we want. So I think you should try it with your beginners now that it's almost the end of the school year. Um, Luz Miranda Valencia asks, can you please repeat the second activity again? Was that the tap and talk? No, that was something No, else. that was the quiz quiz trade. So let me pull that up for you. That would be good, yes. So for the quiz quiz trade, each student will have a card. So you could have the vocabulary word on one side and then on the opposite side would be the definition of the vocabulary word. And you would tell your whole class, everybody stand up, everybody put your hand up and find a partner by pairing up. So once they have their partner, then the first person shows their vocabulary word and says, what is energetic? and the other partner has to say, energetic means to have a lot of energy. And if they couldn't say that, the person holding the card with energetic might say, this has to do with energy. Notice the word energy is part of the word energetic. Does that help you? What do you think energetic means? And they could coach if needed to be. Once the student gets the answer correct, then they praise each other and say, great job. And why do we, there's a lot of that, I, I noticed it's the praising, it's the introducing and then thanking, thanking each other at the end. Why? why yeah, this is to things? teach students proper manners and those social skills that we know are important in your curriculum. So, 
and good communication skills. So once they praise or coach and the student gets it right, then they just flip-flop and the other student answers or shows their vocabulary card, asks the partner what that vocabulary word means and they respond. At the end of both of them asking their questions, then they switch cards. So now they have a new card and then they switch partners. So you can say, you know, okay, now switch partners and they go find someone else in the classroom. They repeat the process, but this time they have a new word. When they're done with their new partner, they trade cards again and then they go find another partner. So you can do it as many times as you want, depending on how much time you think you need. Maybe you try and get through four or five vocabulary cards a day. Um, I wouldn't spend more than about 10 minutes on this activity. That was a great answer, Lisa. Good, I hope that helps. If not, go back and read through the slide. You can download these slides off the webinar and go ahead and just save it and then go back and read through it and I hope it will make sense to you. Yes, you're getting lots of praise. Luz Miranda Valencia likes the coaching part. Yeah, I do uh, too because if you know, we don't always know and instead of just telling them the answer, if students have to try and coach and pull it out, that's good teaching, that's good speaking, that's good thinking skills. So it is a good piece there. Thanks for saying that. Uh, oh, we have a question from Arusiak, Arusiak Ivanian. Uh, what about making word combinations? I'm not sure for which activity that is. Yeah, I think I would need, if you want to type in a little more information, um, I guess what you could do, like on a quiz quiz trade, if you're doing word combinations, you could have part of the word on one side and say what would fit with it. Like if I'm thinking of phrasal verbs, you know, act on one side and then the flip side, act out. Or act up. Uh... Or act so if you want to try it with phrasal verbs and they have to uh, have one part of the phrasal verb on one side, what could you add to it? That would be a really fun activity. I like that idea. Uh, so play with it. We also have a question from Patricia uh, Verdes, Verdesoto. Uh, where, what is a good site to download pictures? I guess the... Oh, you know, never... I just go into Google and I just look for pictures that I think are appropriate. So on my tap and talk activity I did, I, I first found the vocabulary words I wanted my students to know and then I went in. So for federal I decided that maybe a building would be good so I just googled federal building and then um, one of the words was massive which is very large or big so I went in and I just said, you know, typed in the word massive and Arnold Schwarzenegger came up. Um, or I might have typed in a man with massive muscles because I thought my students would think that was funny and fun to talk about. So, you know, have an idea in your mind of what you think might go with that and then Google um, those, those ideas and you'll get tons of pictures. So again, thank you so much for joining me in this webinar for November. Really appreciate you being here and don't forget to go in and like Rob and I's Facebook page for English Language Fellows in Peru. And we will be having another webinar next month. We don't have the exact date, but it will... I think it's December 20th, isn't it? Yeah, before the, the holidays. Yeah, so mark your calendars for December 20th so that you can tune in to the next one. And thanks for being at the embassy with us today. Thank you. And yes, uh, I guess uh, from deep inside the bunker, inside the uh, United, States, United States Embassy here in Lima. We bid you farewell and adieu. adieu. Hasta luego.